today, whether you're watching online or you're here with us, we we'll want to welcome you to Crosspoint. This is our service today and we want to connect with you. So we ask that you take a moment and text eConnect to 555-888. Again, it's eConnect to 555-888 and we would love to connect with you that way. We want to let you know today that we're going to be here for about 65 minutes and Pastor Will will come out here after a few more songs and talk to us about God is. It's just the new series that we're starting today. But as of right now, let's just continue singing together. Wherever you are, join us and let's sing this. Come on.
sing this one more time and say I'm not enough unless you come will you meet me here again cause all we want cause all I want is all you are will you meet me here again I'm not enough you come will you meet me here again cause all I want cause all I want is all you are will you meet me here again Amen Well, we are going to be uh, sharing with you, I want to be sharing with you something that we're doing as a church, and we only get to do it because of your generosity. And so if you're somebody, you're supporting us, just want to thank you for that. If you're somebody, you're going, hey, I want to be giving, the, the easiest way for you to give at a time like this is to use your phone, and you can text the word GIVE247 to 555-888, and you can just find a link that way that you can give. Well, what I have with me today is I have a little bag. And it has his bridge builders on it, but it's really what's about what's inside the bag that I want to talk to you about. This is a ministry that happens downtown San Antonio, and it happens to impoverished families. And so what we did is we said, hey, we want to partner with you, and we want to help provide some school supplies for kids. And so we've got a picture that you can see that has all of the contents that you can find in this bag. And so when you look at this photo, you'll be able to see, oh, wow, those are all the things that, that's inside this bag. But I also want you to see how many of these bags that we are giving away. And what we are doing is we're giving 50. We're providing 50 of these. We've even given them money to buy backpacks because this is just a 
collection bag that we'll give them all the contents with, and then they're going to transfer them into backpacks so that we can give them to these kids. And, and so we're doing this, and, and this is costing about $2,000 is what we're spending to be able to do this. And I just want to be real and open and transparent with you and let you know that's something that, that we are doing with the gifts that you're giving to Cross Point. That, that we're not looking at a time like this and going, oh, we've got to keep all the money for ourselves because we're just uncertain and, and money's too scarce. And we don't. We're continuing to do ministry and partner with organizations so that we can share the love and the hope of Jesus in ways that's tangible. When, when kids get a bag, a backpack that has all these supplies, it is an opportunity for them to hear about, well, why, why would you guys give this? And that his bridge builders gets to go and share the love of Jesus with these kids. And so thank you for what you're doing and how you're continuing to support our ministry so that we can support just other people in helping to share the gospel message. Pray with me. God, I thank you for the way that, that you've just allowed generosity to just continue to happen here at Crosspoint. God, I pray that that we would be a church that would be good stewards, that that we would manage well what what people give here. And God, that we would do it so that we can just share your name and your fame, that your glory would be spread. And we pray for his bridge builders as they go and they they share hundreds, maybe even thousands of backpacks with, with, with other kids. I pray that as they do that, that Jesus, that that they would receive not just a backpack, but they would receive something that lets them know that, God, you care so much that you've moved in the hearts of others to help provide for them and that they would be open to hearing more about who you are. Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen.
You know, I think it's easy for God to be misunderstood. That there, there's things about God that he's revealed about himself, and, and some of us look at those and we get that, and we're kind of like, good. And then there's things about God that, that he's not revealed about himself that we don't yet know. And, and sometimes what I see happening is I see that, that more people spend more effort and energy trying to get to know the things about God that he hasn't revealed instead of spending time understanding the things that he has revealed. And, and if we would do that, then we would understand God so much more. You know, I, I think that, that if anybody that takes and says, hey, I believe that there's a God, I think anybody who's gotten to that place, I, I think they have some thoughts about what God is and what God is not. That, that they do, and, and I've, got a, I've got a short list here of things that I just want us to look at together and go, hey, what, what is this? You know, we've got, got God fair. Is, is God fair or is God not fair? Is, is God cruel or is God not cruel? When we look at this, is God all powerful? Is that who he is? Is that true of him or, or is that an overstatement of who he is and his capabilities? Right. Is, is God right? Is he, is he always right? Is he sometimes right? Where, where are we at? Is he dead? That, that, that we don't have people hearing from him anymore audibly. Is, is he dead? Is, is God dead? We, we wonder that one. Here's another one, listening. Okay, maybe we go, oh, he's not, he's not dead, but he's just not listening. Or maybe he's just not listening to me. And, and, and we question this. And is he this or is he not? And, and then we've got unchangeable. And so when I think about these, I think that, that we end up taking and we say, hey, th these belong somewhere. And so we, we go, hey, God, well, God, certainly, he, he, he must be fair. I mean, that, that's, that's God. Shouldn't everything compare up against God? Isn't God, isn't God the standard? But, but for me, when I look at Scripture, it, it's very clear that God is not fair. And, and, and this is one of the things that I think people struggle with. People struggle with having a God that's not fair, especially people that are going, hey, I'm either on the fence or I'm not even willing to get up on the fence yet. I'm not, I'm not there yet because I, I just think that everybody should be able to go to heaven. And everybody, if, if God's not going to send everybody, then that's not, that's not fair. And see, while, while God says, hey, I'm going to provide a way for any and everybody to come, not everybody chooses the way, which is his son. And so God, he is, he is not fair. Not, not only is he not fair when we look at it that way, when we look around, we go, hey, some people seem to be a whole lot more blessed than others. Whether they're blessed with, with more health, whether they're blessed with more family, whether they're blessed with more finance, we, we just look at it and go, hey, you just need to be more blessed. God is not fair. And I don't think that we would really want him fair. Because if he was fair, none of us deserve to spend eternity in heaven with him. None of us. And if God was fair, then none of us would. So we don't want a fair God. Cruel. <laughs> Some people go, I, I, I can, that's easy. When I look at some of the things that I've had to go through, and, and yet I've leaned into God, and God, it, 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 he's, he's cruel to me. He's cruel to others. He's cruel to that group that, that, that we could go, hey, he's cruel. And some people do. They, they will put this right here. But for me, I don't believe God's cruel. He's just, and we're going to be looking at that in a few weeks that he is a just God. And, and, and when you begin to look at him and being a just God, a, a God that is going to act with justice and do the right thing, that, that, that it's going to make a whole lot more sense. All powerful. All powerful that, that some are going to go, yeah, the, the world wouldn't be in the, the chaos that it is if God was all powerful. So he, he must not be all power. He's got some power, but he's not all powerful. But again, for me, I believe that God is all powerful. 
He doesn't use all of his power the way that we want all the time. But he is an all-powerful God. He's all-powerful. Right. That God is, God is right. That God's right. God is God, and God sets the standard. We might not like what his standard is. We might not like his answer at times. But God is always right. We've got some friends that might think that they're always right, but they're not. They do get it wrong sometimes. And if we're not careful, we'll take our our view of them and go, hey, you think you're always right, but you're not. And we'll start thinking the same thing about God. But God is, he is always right. Dead. Dead. There's some people that would go, yeah, he's, he's dead. Haven't seen any real activity from him. Haven't seen anything. We don't have nothing that we could say, that's God. Except those insurance clauses that say, well, we're not going to cover acts of God. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how, how people get to use that at times and they're, they're, they're going, hey, we're completely comfortable with talking about, hey, there's a God. And then other times it's like, well, you can't talk about God in the business place. But see, God, he's not dead. He is alive and he is well. And, and it brings us to, to our next one when it comes to Listening. See, I think if we're all honest, there's going to be times that, that when we feel like we're praying, we feel like our, our, our prayers are just hitting the ceiling, that, that, that we can't get them all, all the way to God. And, and sometimes we might think, well, God just doesn't want to listen to me. God's too busy. I've, I've done something to, to cause God to not want to listen to me anymore. But God is listening that that he is a listening God and he loves to hear from us and not just with a with a wish list of what we want but he loves to hear from us in the way that we would just spend time with him the way that we would adore him the way that we would praise him we just spent some time singing and and praising and believe me he he was listening to our praises and just as much as he listens to our praises, he listens to our prayers. Unchangeable. Where does that one go? <laughs> you know, it's interesting when we begin to look at these things and, and how we can begin to shape them and go, hey, that's kind of how I'm going to be defining that. See, when we, when we look here, we might go, hey, you know, I've, I've read my Bible. I'm pretty familiar with some things. And, and I know that there was this guy named Moses. And, and that, that, that God has said, hey, I, I'm, I'm done with people. You know, I, I, I did the flood once. And, and you know, I'm, I'm tired of people. I'm just going to wipe them all out again. And Moses, he, he pleads with God not to do that. There's a guy named Lot in our Bible. That God came in and said, hey, I'm, I'm going to destroy the, the town. You've heard of Sodom and Gomorrah, maybe? He said, I'm going to come in. I'm just going to destroy the town. There's too much wickedness here. And Lot begins to, to bargain with God and says, hey, if, but if we could find 50 righteous people, will, will you not wipe it out? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can do that. And Lot goes, well, um, maybe that's a little bit of stretch. How, God, how, how about if there's 40? You know, would you be okay with, with 40? Could you, could you save it? And God's like, yeah, I, I can do 40. And Lot's like going, I'm not sure I can find that. And he keeps whittling it down all the way down to 10. And when we look at things like that, we go, okay, well, well God, he, he can change his mind. We've got scriptural evidence of it. But yet, when it comes to his essence, when it comes to his nature, when it comes to his character and who he actually is, 
He is an unchangeable God. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption. I'm interrupting myself, but I needed to do that because everything I talked to you about this word right here, unchangeable, everything I've said about that, I, I stand behind that. And that's true. But the problem is, is that I mixed up where I put this. And so when I was talking about this idea of prayer, and it seems like when we pray to God and he changes his mind, maybe, that that really would be this God is not unchangeable. That might be a way where, where we would see God might change his mind. But when it comes to his essence, his nature, his character, who he is, God is unchangeable. He is the never changing God. And I just wanted to get that clear because you're going to keep seeing in the video of images of this and it's going to be flip-flopped and wrong. But again, everything I said, that's true. I just had this in the wrong place with one exception. I referred to a guy named Lot and I actually should have referred to Abraham who was concerned for his nephew Lot, but it was Abraham that ends up having this negotiation with God about trying to save the city. So just want to interrupt you myself, get that correct, and now we'll get back on with the rest of the talk. He's unchangeable. We're going to spend six weeks together looking at this idea of God is. And as we look at this idea of God is, we're going to be looking to see these character, these, these attributes, the essence of who God is. And today, we're going to start with that God is creator. He's creator. And as we begin to look and investigate this, that, that, that I, I think that most people that, that are listening, whether you're just joining us online, streaming live, you're streaming it later, you're listening to the podcast, what, whether you are here, I think most people listening, I, I think that you are familiar with the first five words in our Bible. That, that maybe you've not read it cover to cover. Maybe you've not read most of it. Maybe you've only read part of it. Maybe you'd be going, I'm not even sure I've read much of it. But just so many people are familiar with the first five words that we find. In fact, I, I'm going to give you the first three to help you because I think you're going to be able to get number four and five, those words. Okay, here it is. In the beginning. And in the beginning, what? You got it. In the beginning, God created. That's, that's how our Bible starts. That's the account that, that we are given. In the beginning, God created. Let's look at this. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That, that, that it all started. This is kind of mind-blowing to think about this, but there was no time before God created time. That, that there wasn't a beginning until God even created a beginning. And in the beginning, God created and he created the heavens and the earth, which, which makes it very clear that God is creator. But yet we seem to be bombarded these days with, no, no, it, 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 it's, not, it's not creation. It, it, there's this... That there's this big bang and that this thing just happened and, and now we have all of this life and, and earth is so blessed and, and so fortunate and so lucky. There, there's nothing else out there that we've been able to see and find that has life like we do, but, but wow, we, we just kind of got lucky. God is creator and we would not have life without him creating and giving us life. The Old Testament, Genesis, it, it's in the Old Testament. It, it's written in the, in the language of Hebrew. And, and, and in the Hebrew language, when it says, in the beginning God created, the, the word used for God here is, is Elohim. And, and, and this word, it literally is defined as strong one. It's, it's God. He, he is the strong one, and, and the strong one is who created the heavens 
and the earth. And that our beginning begins with this narrative that's found in Genesis. And we're not going to take the time to, to read it all, but, but let's just kind of recap it. Maybe you've heard these before. Because, see, there were, there were six days of creation. And, in, and on day one, God created light. That was the, the, the okay, he, he formed the, the earth, and, and, and he did that at the very beginning. But then you start looking at the days. Day one, he created light. Day two, he separated the, the sky from the sea. And, and, and really, it, the, the best understanding here is this was God started bringing an atmosphere in. And as he started bringing this atmosphere in, he begins to, to separate. And gravity comes in, and hey, we're going to put some moisture up in the air, and, and we're going to bring up the rest of that moisture, and we're going to just kind of, kind of cover the earth. And that was day two. On day three that we see that God creates dry land. And as he creates dry land, he also creates plants. Day four is the sun, the moon, and the stars. Day five, God created the the birds, the winged animals, the winged creatures that, that they would fly. And also the, the water animals, the water creatures, he, he created them on day five. And then on day six, God created all land animals. And he saved the best for last. And the very last thing that God created was humanity. And as he created humanity, he revealed that, that he's creating it in his image. And as he creates humanity, he He does it differently than all the other creation and the accounts of that creation that we got to see because he just kept speaking things into existence. But when it came to humanity, he took some of the dirt that he had created and then he formed humanity. And before giving life, he didn't just speak life into humanity. He breathed life into humanity. And he gave humanity something that he didn't give other creation. And he gave humanity a soul. He gave us something that would exist forever. These bodies, they're going to break down and they're going to expire. But our soul's not going to expire and we're going to exist for eternity. Because it gave God great pleasure to create us in His likeness and to create us to have a relationship with him. Those are the six days of creation, and on the seventh day, God rested. And I I know that that there are people that that are believers that that don't even agree on, well, what was the time period of of that? I I can tell you that for me, I'm somebody that I just take a, a day at face value. A 24-hour period. See, there was no person around for days one, two, three, four, and five. So, so nobody was telling us. Nobody was there to witness it and, and to talk about what happened. And so how did we get this? How do we even know this? Well, it was about 1500 B.C. That, that God sits down with Moses and begins to reveal things to him about what had taken place. And Moses is the one that writes this book of beginnings, Genesis, and writes this all out for us to begin to understand how how, how did this happen? How how did we get here? And as God begins to just tell him what happened on each one of these days, that for me, I I just believe that, that because a day was already established, because that measurement of time was already known, I just believe that that's literally the amount of time that God took. And I know that's a struggle for some because they, they, they look and they go, hey, you know, there, there's just things here that, that they certainly appear to be much older than what that would be if you think it's just a young 
earth. You see, as a, as a young earth, that, 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 that would mean that our earth would be less than 10,000 years old. Somewhere between six, 7,000 years old and, and all the way up to 10,000, somewhere in there would be this, this young earth theory. But, but some people struggle with that, I know, because they, they look and they see and there's some science things and it can measure things and it says, hey, no, this is hundreds of, of thousands of years old or this is million or millions of years old or billion and billions of years old. But I can just tell you that for me, that, that I don't think that God had anything to hide. And, and, and I don't think it would make him a creator that would be like, huh, we're not as impressed, God, because uh, you took three million years to do that. I don't think God had anything to hide. And, and I do think that God is an all-powerful God. And he's capable of creating a very mature-looking earth, even though it could be young. But I'm also one of those guys that I don't believe that when Adam was created, that he was created as a little six-pound, seven-ounce, 19-inch long package. And then it was like, huh, see you when you get older. <laughs> I, I think that he created, and I don't know. I'm just telling you what I think. I think that he created him as a full-size man. And I, I think that God, who started with a mature man, I think he just started and said, I'm going to create a mature earth. But it doesn't matter where you land on this. The one thing that, that we should all be able to come together on is, is that he created. That God is creator, God. And in the beginning, God created. Let's look at some other scripture together. In Psalm chapter 19, we'll start in verse 1. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. And day after day, day they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him know. They make him known. And what is it that makes him known? It's looking around at creation and going, that makes God known. Verse 3, they speak, the things that have been created, they speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is never heard. That when we look at the day, we see the sky, it doesn't speak, but it doesn't have a voice. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. Yeah, that's something we find in our, in our Old Testament this time before Jesus came. But that thought doesn't get limited to just being an Old Testament belief and thought. Look at this, it's in the New Testament in Romans chapter 1. Verse 20, for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. And through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature. That when you look at that, you go, there are three things creation reveals about God. And what are these three things? His invisible qualities. That there's things that the unseen God, but we can see the quality of who he is because of what he has done. His invisible qualities. His eternal power. That, that we get to see that, that here's the one who, who is the giver of life and the sustainer of life. God the creator. And we get to see his divine nature. These things that, that, that Paul writes about here in Romans, that, that these are three things that creation, that, that it reveals about God. And since these things are revealed about God, Paul went on and he said this. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. That, that, that creation speaks and it says there is a creator God. And so anybody who says, hey, I, I, I don't have any evidence of God, I don't, they have no excuse because creation speaks to his existence. Have you ever looked at a sunset and had to just stop and take it in? That, that, that when you, it, it, it's just this, there's just something majestic about sometimes when we just kind of look and, and see and I've got three different ones that, that I want you to see. That, that here's one that 
is, is taken at the, the southernmost part of the United States. It was taken at Key West. And just looking out there and seeing and seeing the water and the land and, 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 and just the, the southernmost part of our great nation. And, just, and then that beautiful sunset. Just, just incredible. Here's another one from, from Alaska. Just looking out, and this is back when they actually had these things called cruise ships. And, and we took a cruise, and, and just, just looking at that sunset that night, and just taking that picture so that we could continue to just take it in over time. Here's the last one I'll share with you. It's from, from Hawaii. And just, just when you begin to see the, the, the colors, there's just something about when we stop and, and we can appreciate creation and what God's doing, that it, it draws us back to our creator, that there is creator God. And I think that, that when God does this, that, that I think that there's times he's going to say, you know, I just want to get your, get your attention with what I've created. To remind you of who I am. And not only am I the creator of that beautiful sunset. But God wants us to know how he thinks of us. That he's the creator of the beautiful you. Because he is creator God. The prophet Isaiah, Old Testament. Chapter 45 verse 18. For the Lord is God. And he created the heavens and the earth, and he put everything in place. It's who he is. It's what he's done. And he made the world to be lived in, not a place of empty chaos. You know, when I think about just kind of the times that we're in right now, it's not empty. But it sure does seem like we've introduced a whole lot of chaos. And God never intended that, that, that this place would be a place that would just be full of chaos. He's a God of order. And creation, it, it was this act of turning chaos into beauty. That in the beginning, that the, the, the earth, it was, it was formless and void. There was no life. And, and he took and he brought order to the chaos. And he brought beauty to it God created and he created with intentionality he created with with purpose and we need to have a deep appreciation that that he created us to have a relationship with him that he saved the best for last in creating us and he created us for a relationship and it's that relationship that gives him the greatest pleasure that Isaiah knew what God had spoken because Isaiah could hear God and then what Isaiah writes down is he writes down this I am the Lord he says and there is no other there's no other God there's no other creator outside of me and who I am and my uniqueness of being God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There is none other. You know, a creator is one who makes something new. And, and we tend to think of people who are creators. They're, they're, they're artists and and they they create things there are builders and they create things and and there are designers that they're architects and they they lay things out and they say hey here you you go build or we're going to create the design and then you create the structure and so we're familiar with this thing called creation but but see all of those creators they started with something it kind of reminds me of of how somebody once said this They said that there were some scientists that they had reached the point that they believed that they could create humanity. And so they sent out a challenge to God. 
and said, God, we, we believe that, that we can create humanity as well, and, and we just want to put you up to a challenge and see who can make the better person. Will you accept? And so God accepts, and they set the, the date and the time and the place, and it arrives, and then God shows up. And the scientists, they arrive, and, and they're there, and, and as they're getting ready to get started, God looks over and he sees that they've got a creator, a, a container of dirt that they're going to start with. God got his dirt that he's going to start with too. And God says, uh, hold on a minute. That's my dirt. You got to create your own dirt to start with. You can't start with my stuff. You got to start with only your stuff. See, see, now, although that didn't happen, but it gives us a perspective of, of God who is our creator. And he's not just a creator. He is the creator of life. Look at this passage with me in John chapter 1. In the beginning, the word already existed. Capital W there. You need to know that. You need to capture that. We've talked about this not too long ago. The word was with God and the word was God. So in case you're not in the loop, this is referring to Jesus. We don't have enough time to get into all of that, to show all that and reveal all that. But, but, but that's just the, the short note version on it. So in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. But verse 3, verse 3 says so much. God created everything through him. Through who? Through the word. Who's the word? The word is Jesus. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. So God has created everything through Christ. And so it shouldn't surprise us that when it comes to redeeming humanity, that he chose Jesus, the one who did the creating, to do the redeeming. And Jesus came to redeem us. In Isaiah 40, verse 28, have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, creator of all the earth. He's asking, have you never heard this? Have you never understood it? Maybe you heard it, but you just didn't understand. He's the creator and the sustainer of life. He goes on, he says, he never grows weak or weary. God never gets a cold. He never gets a virus. God never needs a weekend to rest. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. You see, that it's why sometimes we, we struggle with some of these things about God, about what he is and, and what he is not. Because we can't fully understand, God, why are you that way? Why is that true about who you are? So God, he's not limited. He's not limited to, to our understanding. That God, he's not limited to time as we know it. He, he's not limited and confined to, to space. He is so far beyond what we can understand and comprehend. But as creator God, that God is the originator. He's the originator of life. He is the ultimate designer. It's who he is. And he is the ultimate craftsman. Because he didn't just design, he did the craftsmanship. That God is our creator. God is the creator. 
And there is a appreciation, an appreciation that only comes from a relationship with the Creator. That, that when you have a relationship with the Creator, that, that, that you appreciate creation so much more. The, the, the best way that, that I can illustrate this for you guys is I brought a couple of items today. I brought this one. And I brought this one. That our daughter created this one. And our son created this one. And, and, and this one that our daughter created, you know, I just look at it and go, hey, okay, some kind of little shape and, you know, whatever. She's got peace signs going if you look that way, you know. And, but, but, but with our son, I was like going, I don't remember him explaining to us what this was. So I decided to ask him. And I said, no, Noah, recognize this? No. It's got your name on it. You did this. Okay? So what is it? I don't know. <laughs> you know, that's, that's true about us when it comes to how we create. We'll, we'll create things and we won't even know what we're creating and we won't even remember what we created. But you see, as, as his father and for Cheryl, as, as his, the mother of our children... These are things that were kept. You know why they were kept and you know why they were deemed as valuable? Is because there was a relationship. And it's the relationship that we look at and we go, that's why we appreciate what was created. And we're going to miss out on appreciating creation if we don't have a relationship with the Creator. And if our relationship with the Creator is kind of at odds, if our relationship with the Creator is just mediocre, then, then our appreciation for creation is going to be at odds. It's going to be mediocre. And it's only when we have this place that we go, we have a deep appreciation for our Creator, that we will have a deep appreciation for His creation. Not just saying, hey, we need to watch out for Mother Earth, but His creation and Him being the creator of it. He's created. He is designed and He is the craftsman of all things life. And He created you. He designed you and He created you. And when we have an appreciation for who he is, we will even have a greater appreciation for how he designed us. Let's pray. God, thank you for being the master creator. God, that, that as you've created, you, you created us to have relationship with you. God, you created a, an earth that that, that we could be here and that we could exist and we could live. And God, you meant for this to be a place without chaos and, and beauty, but yet we've, we've messed that up so many times in so many ways. God, I pray that, that as we recognize you as creator, that that essence of, of who you are that cannot be stripped from you, I pray that it would it would stir in us a, a deeper appreciation for you and who you are and what you are doing that we would trust you more as the creator of our life. Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen.
With no point of reference You spoke to the dark And fleshed out the wonder of light And as you speak A hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've made. Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. Disappear 
Where you lost your life So I could find it here If you can the light behind you So will I I can see your heart And everything you've done Every part design And work of art You plan me to surrender, so will I. I can see in your heart a billion different ways. Every precious one, a child you died to see. If you gave me life to love them, so will I. Like you would again a hundred million times But what measure could amount to your design You're the one who never leaves the one behind Pray with me. Father, we are so grateful because in your great magnitude, you are the one who never leaves the one behind. You want to know us personally. You're so creative and we're grateful for the creation that you've made for us. We pray that through our relationship with you, we're able to admire it. We're grateful, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll see you guys next time.